Now, coming back to Myanmar, human rights is a new concept that has been identified under the present regime and the previous regime when the military hand over power to elected government. Our constitution of 2008 has certain articles which are related to human rights. One of them is that the, the union, which is, means the state, prohibits the enslavement and trafficking of persons. Another article said, no penalties shall be prescribed that violated human rights, human dignity. And then also necessary laws shall be enacted for making citizens freedom, rights, and benefits in steadfast and complete. The union shall guarantee any person to enjoy equal rights before the law and shall equally provide legal protection. So these are the basic uh, concepts incorporated in our constitution. Now the commission itself, in short MNHRC, Myanmar National Human Rights Commission, was established as, you, as been, uh, Chris has said in 2011. This is in line with the recommendation of the United Nations Human Rights Councils, UNHRC, Universal Periodic Review, which is done to all the member states in a periodic review of their human rights performance. So we became the fifth country among ASEAN members, 10 ASEAN members to establish a national human rights institution. Now, this institution is accountable to the president of the government of the of the country and it had to submit reports to the president the parliament and relevant un bodies just like unhrc the law was enacted only in 19 and 2014 although the commission was established in 2011 the actual law was passed only in 2014 and it is mandated to promote public awareness of human rights and combat all forms of discrimination and human rights violations through the provision of information, education, and complaint mechanism. Human, it, it is the objective is for this to, to establish a society where human rights are respected and protected in recognition of the UNDHR, which is the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. This is the so-called union level body which uh, could be say a central level body and its chair has the status of a union minister and the commissioner has the status of deputy minister or minister of state. It was, it has a five year term. So it was reconstituted with 11 members which include the chairperson by a presidential order in 2020 January. For gender participation, it's not so bad. I mean, we have four females commissioner among the 11 and the vice chair is the lady. We operated six functional divisions in our head office. One is promotion, education, another is protection, another is legal affairs and international relations. There is also administration and finance division. And then there is so-called e-government division, which was formed very recently in September, 2020 to keep up with the times. Our activities are based on our operational plan. And for annual plan of last year, it was operational plan for 2020. We have a timeline for our activities. But however, due to COVID-19, restrictions are there, of course, on our public activities, and some of them have to be postponed. The commission is implementing the remaining planned activities of the year. And now we are now in 2021. And in addition, we also have tasks of our choice by utilizing ICD resources and online platforms because we have social distancing, we have uh, partial lockdowns in certain parts of the country. Among our main activities, we issue public statements on cons concerning human rights issues in, me in the media and, and to the general public for raising awareness and also to alert the authorities concerned. Some of them include the presidential amnesty of the prisoners. And then we also have declaration on ceasefires 
And then also on COVID-19 restrictions, which would restrict movement. And then we also are concerned with children and violent children in and violent conflict, which means we have conflict zones, which are brown areas where children suffer the most. And we are also concerned with cyberbullying. And then the women's dignity is our main concern too, regarding the, the how the, our women are treated. And then we also comment on mine disasters, which resulted in human lives lost. And then we also, as a rule, on a daily basis, handle complaints. We inspect them if, if necessary, and then we will then send our recommendations to the authorities concerned. We also observe the November 2020 general elections as much as we can within our own resources. In our engagement, we have our following topics uh, concern, especially with the international uh, partners. We discuss them, basically our strategic plan, mainly with our NHRI partners in our Asia Pacific and also our operational plan. And we, we also discuss with our international partners recommendations of the Commission's capacity assessment report and future activities. We also cooperate with some of the international organization regarding election monitoring. And we are now engaging in business and human rights issues. These are all with our international partners and UN bodies. Some of them include Asia Pacific Forum of National Human Rights Institutions. And we attended their meetings in August online. And we discussed the Paris principles. We also engage with UN agencies, INGOs, foreign diplomats. For example, we met with United Nations Development Program staff and they have technical experts and they are providing us funds and technical assistance, especially in the IT infrastructure and our public outreach program and human rights knowledge sharing. So we also cooperate with UNICEF, United Nations Inter Children's Fund and international Com the International Committee for the Red Cross ICRC. We also host foreign ambassadors to discuss cooperation with the countries. Some of them are from European Union, Singapore, Czech Republic, for example, last year. Our promotion and education division is concerned mainly with dissemination of human rights knowledge. So far, in the last five years, we have conducted human rights talks to more than 100 townships all over the countryside. We provide workshops and training programs for government officials, civil social and public and the general public, civil society organizations. We foster the culture of respect for human rights and development of peaceful democratic society. We gave lectures on human rights at government training institutions for civil service, police, military officers, and the fire service as well. We produce educational material, documents, broadcast materials in collaboration with some of the NGOs. One of them is the child rights working group of the local NGOs. We produce booklets in both Myanmar and English on the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and translated them into 21 ethnic languages to distribute all over the country. And we also have radio broadcasts in 17 ethnic languages. We have a multi-ethnic, multicultural, multi-religious society. And in terms of protection, basically we are, we have installed a complaint mechanism and the procedures are public. We invite complaints of human rights violations and examine them thoroughly with true field trips if necessary and convey the findings to the necessary authorities to take action. Mm -hmm.